Hello, and welcome to my next executive series video. Our topic is design review. Aaron Snyder here from Quality Systems Explained, where we make quality systems simple for you. If you're new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. If this is the first executive series video that you've seen, please go back and review the introduction. Check out the video description below for links to any supporting information and for an outline of the material that we cover. In my executive series, we have a standard agenda which covers four areas. You can see those four areas in the progress bar below. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video to get those three bonus questions. Our requirement today, design review, comes from 820.20e and ISO 1345 section 7.3.5. Design review in five words. Systematically review designs for problems. You have to have a procedure that defines how you do your design reviews. That procedure must document at which steps within the design and development process we do design reviews, who has to participate in the design reviews, and what records we need to produce during the design review process. What's really important is that we focus on who participates in the design review. Everyone involved in that design stage being reviewed, we must have someone who's independent, and then we must also include any needed subject matter experts or specialists that are needed to understand that product. The participants in the design review have to be trained on your design and development process, and they also need to have expertise in your product, or some part of the process that's being reviewed. The records for design review need to include the version of the design being reviewed, so all of the different elements of design being reviewed, who participated in the design review, the date, and then any actions that have come out of that design review. So how do I know this is working? Well first, we have enough design reviews to ensure that the design is adequate. Should be three or more throughout your design and development process. Second, you have the right people, the right participants in each design review stage. That should include someone independent of the design and development process. Third, the participants in the design process, they have ample time to review the materials. Should be at least a week or more to review all the materials before the design review is actually held. And then finally, during the design review, you're actually finding problems and you're issuing actions that need to be tracked and closed out before the design and development project is complete. So how do I know design reviews are not working? Well, first, you don't have the right people at the meeting. Second, the attendees, they don't have enough time to review the materials. Third, the attendees, they don't find any problems. Everything goes well, there's nothing, no discussion, and the meeting really isn't value added at all. And then finally, you don't have adequate records of the actual design review meetings. Now for the bonus. Do we have any requirement in our process to circulate the materials for design review before the design review meeting? Second, actions issued at the design review. How are those tracked and managed to ensure that they are all addressed before our product launch? And then finally, if I'm looking at a specific project, your first question should be, who is the independent reviewer? And were there any subject matter experts or specialists needed at this design review? Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. If you have any questions, please send me an email at qms.jedi at gmail.com. This is Aaron Snyder from Quality Systems Explained. Never stop learning.